Yeah, congratulations on the film. I love the fact that it's a multi, multi-narrative. I mean, uh, three different stories and they all come together. Since you're the screenwriter as well, why did you decide uh, to, to do it like that, to tell the story like that? Well, it's a pleasure to be here and, and thank you for, for watching. Um, you know, I really like those films uh, that look at something from multiple viewpoints. Um, obviously, we have great movies like Traffic with the Mexico and the cocaine crisis. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that you can get, uh, you know, with a complex topic like opioids, you can really create a multifaceted thriller where, you know, if you were into one thing, you wouldn't really be able to explore all of the elements of it in the depth that a complex subject requires. So, and I think you also get a kind of propulsiveness of cinema by moving between these different stories. How do they relate to each other? How do they inform each other? That's kind of a dance you do in the script. And then when you make the film in the editing, plus you get to work with so many wonderful actors, um, you know, it's kind of, more the merrier. Um, I love actors and I love what this cast brought to the film. I was going to say you have incredible actors. I mean, uh, eh, each one, uh, like Gary Oldman, the Army, Evangelina. But uh, eh, I want to, eh, I lost it a little. I got distracted. No, but wait. Uh, the actors. All, yeah, the actors. Uh, you deal with uh, University of Harvard university professor who does research with an agent and then with a, an architect who's addicted. So uh, I think that uh, it's very compelling to have all this different uh, narratives in the story because you get a more realistic approach. It's almost like a documentary doc considering all the, that is, uh, it's very real, the addiction to opioids, right? Yeah. In a way. It's yes. not like you, you just wrote it out of the blue. It's, you based it kind of in, rea in reality, I guess. Well, I did a tremendous amount of research for this film. So I started and I, I, I hooked up with this uh, undercover uh, narcotics uh, policeman um, who had busted some of these cartels. And so we went to the real places. We saw the, the pill mills, the illegal doctor's offices. And we went through the case files. At the same time, I did a bunch of research on the pharmaceutical side. Um, I knew people in the pharmaceutical industry, CEOs, and we went into the labs and learned about how the drug approval process works, how they test things. And we also went and looked at research with investigative reporters of the behavior of drug companies, um, what they knew and whether or not they had tried to quiet down research that said that these drugs really could get people hooked. Um, so I tried to explore it from all sides. I mean, the film starts with the boy crossing the open border to Canada in the snow. That's a true story that came right off CNN a few years ago. Some, some young kid was busted that way. So you try to take- In the middle of winter. Side. No, in the middle, middle of winter, winter in the, in the middle of winter, of Montreal. So cold. <laughs> uh, we shot that up there, it was freezing. Um, but you know, you, 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 you take these elements and then uh, you put them through the, through the prism of imagination kind of expand them, shape them, you know, and, and try to find the characters and the emotional core of these stories. And what I liked about these characters was in my last film arbitrage I had done, uh, Richard Gere was a billionaire. He was caught in the financial crisis. Um, here we have three people who are really, uh, you know, everyday people, um, an architect, a scientist, a cop, um, you know, maybe they have complicated jobs. Uh, but, you know, they're regular people and they're fighting against great odds for what they believe in or what they're called to do. So I like that idea of trying to make it relatable to the general public. Yeah, indeed. Um, I love the thriller. Um, you know, I think thrillers, you know, a great thriller can really pull you in and get you very, very on the edge of, you know, we always want to push tension and we don't want you to know what happens next. We want you to wonder what happens next. Right, so we want to keep you on the edge of your seat because I think that's how you engage with the film on an emotional level. The great critic Roger Ebert, I got to know, and I remember he said that uh, films are an emotion machine, you know. And you come in, and if the film does its job, it can really take you on this ride. So I think that the uh, the thriller is a very powerful mechanism for that. But at the same time, we can explore these complicated topics: pharmaceuticals, uh, the government lobbying, um, undercover police work. Um, you know, uh, vigilantism. Um, we, we, we get to look at this, uh, you know, in a very dynamic context. And I think that makes it unboring 
uh, and it doesn't feel like you have to eat your vegetables with the movie. You know, it treats you like an adult and lets you form your own conclusions. Yeah, I, I like the fact that you are not like, uh, uh, now you have to think this or that is more open and uh, surprising. The surprise the factor famous, in thrillers. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. I think that the surprise factor. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the surprise. Is very important in thrillers. Sur surprising people with uh, twists and uh, with situations that you don't expect. So it's very non-formulated in a way. Well, um, I think, you know, what uh, many years ago, obviously, the, the Greeks were inventing drama. And there was Aristotle, who was the great uh, 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 writer yeah. of his time, you know, and he said that a, a great story, you know, the ending has got to be surprising, yet inevitable. Uh, so that, you know, he says, you know, coincidence, it has an air of design. Um, and so that's what I like to try to do is to try to take you on a journey where you don't know what's going to happen next. You're going down these dark paths. You go, oh, my God, no, he went here. Ah, don't go in there. And then but by the very end, when it all unfolds and you unravel the tension, you go, ah, I see, it had to go that way. There was no other way. You know, it all, may, it has a feeling that it makes sense and it's earned. And I think these characters go through some very tough circumstances in the film, but hopefully by the end of the film, there's some hope for them. And you feel that whatever, whatever surprises and reversals they've suffered, um, you know, that there's gonna be uh, some light at the end of the tunnel and you have a sense of satisfaction about the actions that they've taken. I think, uh, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think that your career uh, started with the recognition at Sundance, at the Sundance yeah. Film Festival. In a way, um, well, when you were 16, you did the, you were consulting for uh, as a hacker, right? Yes, I was, uh, Angelina Jolie was, uh, gave me my first job. I was uh, the technical advisor to her and the other actors and director on, on hackers from my computer background. Um, and I had made documentaries and I'd written some screenplays uh, made into films. Um, but then Sundance was a great launching pad for arbitrage. Um, and, you know, I, I remain very involved with the festival and, and a great supporter. You know, it's been tough to have these festivals in the pandemic, of course. Um, but we keep on in some fashion. Last question, because we're running out of time. How, how important is it to get recognition as a filmmaker through your films? From institutions well, or from the audience or critics? I think, yeah, I think, um, you know, what you want with a film is really just want people to see it. You know, you want people to see it. And uh, I don't want, I, I, my mother told me when I was growing up, she said, you know, people can have many different interpretations of a work of art. Um, you know, it's really up to the person who consumes it to say what it means to them. So you never want to tell someone what you wanted to do. You know, you want to create something that they can reflect on, hopefully has enough complexity and, and meaning uh, that they can take something away from it. So I love talking to people like yourself. I, you know, I'll go on and, and, and watch, uh, you know, somebody's YouTube review on the Internet. Uh, that's really the most satisfying to me is just hearing back from the audience how they interacted with it. If I've done my job as a storyteller, you know, at least I've entertained you. But I want to hear what you think about it. I want to hear where it takes you. Um, and I think, you know, provoking conversation, um, that's the function of art and society. Uh, it's not an end to itself. It's there for uh, further discussion.